Chloe, and welcome to another episode of Cosplay Speedrun. Today, we're going to be making Ash Ketchum's outfit from the original Pokemon series, but this costume isn't going to be worn by me. I thought it'd be fun to surprise my partner, who, at the time of this recording, is about to go to his first ever anime convention. If you're watching this, then the convention already happened, and you can check out that video by clicking the top right corner. Anyway, let's jump right into it. I started with the gloves because I knew they'd be the hardest and most time consuming. I tried making gloves on two other occasions and failed miserably, so hopefully the third time would be the charm. But easier said than done, especially when you're making gloves for someone else and they have bigger hands than you. I used this giant hand as my pattern. I couldn't get my partner's measurements since it was a surprise, so I got a male coworker to trace his hand for me. Shout out to you, Jeff. So I traced four of these onto my fabric. Luckily I had some left over from a previous cosplay. Once they were out, I pinned them together in pairs, cut the fingertips off, and started sewing. This got tricky because the pattern didn't leave me enough room to give the middle finger more space. I did have to readjust my pattern to make it bigger, but eventually I ended up with a pair that were way too big for me, but would just fit my partner. Once I knew for sure they could fit, I finished them off with darker green lining with strips also cut from leftover fabric. And so, I finally made a pair of wearable gloves. Now that those are done, time to move on to the easiest and most relaxing part of the process, the hat. I used a plain white baseball cap you can buy at Michaels, Joann's, or Walmart. The first thing I did was the green symbol in the middle. I traced it from a reference image on my computer and then cut the pattern out. You could trace the pattern onto the hat if you have a pencil or something in the same color ink, but I did it the hard way. I painted the back side of the pattern, then stuck it onto the hat and filled in the rest. You don't have to get the entire piece on with a full coat of paint, just enough of an outline to help you the rest of the way. Once that was done, I just went around the rest of the hat with the red paint.
I should have grabbed it at the beginning, but putting the hat on a wig head made the process a lot smoother. Don't forget to paint the little circular thing up top and underneath the brim of the hat. And now we have our hat. My wig head looks like a homicide victim now, but I'm happy with how this turned out. This was super easy and way cheaper than buying a hat online. And last but not least, it's time to make the shirt. I started with this basic blue polyester t-shirt I found on Amazon. You can use a long sleeve or short sleeve shirt. It doesn't really matter since they're getting seam ripped off anyway. Once the shirt was cut down the middle and the sleeves removed, I quickly hemmed the edges in front to clean it up a bit. Then I took some yellow bias tape I had left over from my Supergirl cape and lined the bottom of the shirt with it. Then I stitched a few extra strips on the side where the pockets would be. I didn't try to make actual pockets because I've never done that before and didn't want to risk ruining the shirt, but if you wanted to try it yourself, you could use the leftover fabric from the sleeves you cut off. Next, I took the sleeves and collar I harvested from a blouse and sewed those on. The sleeves were only annoying because with one of them it was hard to tell which one was the right side and such, but I eventually figured it out. Thankfully, adding the collar was much quicker. Last but not least are the buttons. Luckily, I had a matching pair I dug out of my sewing box. They just needed a few coats of paint. You can easily find yellow buttons at any craft store. I just use these to save time and money. While the paint was drying, I cut two little squares from the leftover sleeves I cut off and hemmed them. I did it by hand since they were too small to even be worth putting through my machine, but it's up to you how you want to do it. 
I also wrap them up in craft foam before sewing to make them sturdier. Then I glued my newly yellow buttons onto the blue squares and from there hand sewed them onto the sides of the shirt. And with that, we're done now. Okay, so obviously this is a little big on me, but like I said at the beginning, I didn't make this for me to wear. I made it for my partner, so hopefully it fits him. I'd say the gloves are the weak link here just because I've never been good at making gloves, but I think the hat and shirt are solid. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out, and I can't wait to not only show it to him, but to make another one for myself. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget the notification bell. You can also follow me on my other social media link in the description below. And I'll see you next time for more cosplay fun. Later!